We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm here with First Updates Now at the RI3D competition here at Ferris State University. So I'm here with Eric and Luke. They've got an awesome robot here. This is the Bulldogs, the Kettering robot. It's really on fire out there on the field right now. So I'm going to turn it over to Eric and he's going to tell you a little bit about the robot. All right, so on our robot, we have just four main systems. We have the intake, indexer, shooter, and climber. Uh, Luke's able to talk about the intake really well. so. Just kind of going into the indexer though, we have a mini a bag motor on a 8 to 1 reduction under our robot that runs this belt to run our indexer all the way through the robots, um, which then feeds the ball into our shooter, which is 6 inch, which is 6 inch uh, high grip Andy Mark wheels uh, with 1 inch of compression on them. We found that this is very effective, however, we've had some issues with it being a bit powerful, so we started shooting from the side, and that seems to be really good for keeping the balls in the goal. As far as our intake goes, we experimented with a couple of things, including polycord belts, rollers, things like that. We ended up finding that for the best option for us was using mechanum wheels, 4-inch mechanum wheels on the outsides of the intake, and then compliant wheels on the inside. This helped us to center the ball, so we had a wider range of ability to collect the power cells, and it transfers it with surgical tubing off of our indexer motor, so all of that is connected at the same time, and it transfers it into the indexer and takes it from there. All right, you want to talk a little bit about your climber? Sure, so our climber works by, it basically has a winch and then the rest of it is only stored power with surgical tubing, so we were able to keep it really simple yet effective. So our winch starts running at the end game start, and it actually breaks a small zip tie, enabling the arm to fling up. So we didn't attach the hook well because uh, we were coming right out of the match and just place it down, but the hook will catch on to, will be attached to the arm the arm will fling up just like that, and then we are able to drive forward into the rung, and we just winch down. The arm brings it down. There's no force going through this PVC arm, so we were fine using something that has a little less structure and stability. And then it just pulls down and lifts the robot up right at about the center of gravity. So we're able to balance our robot with uh, regards to the center pretty well. Awesome, great job guys. Now what are some of the challenges that you've had as you built this robot? I know, you know, nothing ever goes quite as planned. What's some of the stuff that you've had to worry about as you've, as you've worked on building this? So, especially as we can see in some of these matches, there's a lot of problems that uh, come along with things that aren't, I guess, positively controlled. So our intake kind of just falls down to a set point when we start the match and that's the only way of getting it down and able to collect power cells. So this has uh, brought up a couple problems with maybe being off center, unlevel, and things like that, and then uh, not being able to collect the power cells because of its kind of, uh, I guess, variability in falling down. So that has been one struggle. We uh, are quickly adapting during the competition, though, and uh, changing some stuff up, making sure that there are uh, no intersections, collisions, so that we're going to be able to uh, collect power cells pretty well. Eric, did you have anything? Uh, yeah, kind of adding on to the whole intaking thing, because it's uh, just run off the surgical tubing and it's free moving, we've had issues with it sometimes coming under and getting jammed under our inner uh, tube if we grab the ball from the side. Uh, what we found that we can actually fix that is during the match, if we see that it starts to jam, you can hear it, it's really loud, we can literally just tap the intake button a bunch, it still gets the ball in and it actually starts to move the surgical tubing out to the side. And it's something that's really easy to see during the match from the driver station, so it, we haven't had jams from that yet like we have at our practice field. Great job guys. Again, this is the Kettering RI3D team, the Bulldogs. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.